Hi everyone. I'm delighted to be participating in our annual World Digital Preservation Day event here at the National Library of Ireland. I've been the NLI's web archivist since 2016 and I'm proud to be here today celebrating its 10th birthday. We've come a long way since 2011 and today I'm going to bring you on a journey through the National Library of Ireland's web archive. But before I delve into the archives, I'm going to quickly give you a brief overview of the National Library of Ireland. Founded in 1877, we are a legal deposit library. We're the office of the Chief Herald, and we're home to some of the most fascinating collections of private papers. We have about 110 staff members, and they are spread out over three sites. The Kildare Street Campus, the Seamus Heaney Exhibition at College Green, and the National Photographic Archive at Temple Bar. And like a lot of the glam sector, the pandemic forced us to have an even greater presence online. And we now offer virtual talks and tours. We are guided in all our activities by our mission, our strong tradition of collecting for and on behalf of the people of Ireland. And of course, by our strategy, our new strategy will be published next year and we are also in the process of updating our collection development policy and you may have been involved in our public consultation that was held recently. You may also be aware of our diversity and inclusion policy which guides us in every aspect of our work here in the National Library and you can read more about our policies, strategies, our heritage on the National Library's website. And of course, you can visit us in person and uh, one of our many exhibitions. The NLI has three primary collecting areas. Special collections, published and digital collections. These are the three collecting strands of the NLI and they are supported by our development office, our education, learning and programming department, and our estates and administrative departments. The digital collection department was formed in 2015, and we are a mix of IT professionals, librarians, digital preservation specialists, and archivists. We are responsible for digitization, the web archive, born digital collecting, digital preservation, and also the IT infrastructure, including the online catalog and the repository. We are a small team, but we work together to achieve our collecting goals and contribute to the overall mission of the NLI. Web archiving is one of those things that when I present, I have to include a definition. This is from the International Internet Preservation Consortium, of which the NLI are active members. Web archiving ensures the preservation of portions of the web for future research and study. There are so many preconceived notions about web archiving, so I think that it's often helpful to include a list of what web archiving is not. It's not Google indexing, or bookmarking a page, or saving a hyperlink. It is not cataloging of a live website, or right-clicking and saving as. And the most common misconception is that it's not taking a screenshot or a screen recording. It's important to remember web archiving is all about preservation and ensuring access into the future. One of the questions I'm asked the most is why does the NLI archive the web? Well, there are a number of answers to this question. The web changes very quickly. It's estimated that a web page changes or disappears every 90 to 100 days. And that's not a very long lifespan when compared to traditional or physical archives. It is, of course, a rich source of information. It's where we get our news from. It also is important for the documentation of culture. One could simply not study the history of the late 20th or 21st century without looking at the web. And it also offers accountability, in particular when we think about the amount of government and public sector bodies that publish now almost exclusively online. And finally, for us in the National Library, we see the web archive as a continuation of our collecting strategy, a necessary activity to achieve our mission in the 21st century. And our mission is the same as it was over 140 years ago, and that is to collect, preserve and make accessible 
the documentary An Intellectual Heritage of Ireland. So I'm going to take you on a journey through time now and bring you back to the year 2011. Ten years ago, there was a general and a presidential election. Civil partnership became legal in Ireland and Kilkenny won the All-Ireland hurling final. But the less said about that, the better. It was decided that the general election and the presidential election of that year would be the perfect pilot project for web archiving for the National Library to undertake. So following a scoping and tendering process, the pilots were launched. Della Keating, our colleague in digital collections, uh, was in charge of this process. So in that year, around 200 websites were archived covering both elections. And that started with the general election in February of that year and finishing in November with the presidential election. 2011 built the foundation of the NLI Selective Web Archive and this is where our story begins. Here are some of the websites that we archived that year. So this is Fine Gael's 2011 website, which is no longer live. Uh, RTE's coverage of the government formation on the 9th of March 2011. And finally, Michael D. Higgins's website from November 2011, which is also no longer live. Following the success of the pilot project, the NLI went to tender for a longer contract and we began working with our original technical partner. And while the 2011 pilots had very much focused on Irish politics and elections, we started to take a broader view of Ireland. The period of 2012 to 2015 saw the growth and establishment of the NLI's web archive. It built upon the foundations laid in 2011. So workflows and collection strategies were created to manage the complicated process of archiving websites, including notifying owners and carrying out quality assurance and making the websites accessible. The collections became broader and more representative of society. So if you can cast your mind back to 2012 and 2013, what was Irish life online like? The new government had dreamed up the gathering which brought bringing the Irish diaspora home to celebrate their roots. And blogs were a large part of life online then. And these early collections reflect the broad range of Irish blogs that were online and operating at the time. And we also collected a range of festival websites, we still do, reflecting Irish art and culture. And I've included this image from the 2013 website of the Cork Midsummer Festival. And of course, during this time, one of the largest and most significant collections and events was that of the 2015 uh, marriage equality referendum. Websites from both sides of the campaign were archived at the time, capturing a representation of this important referendum. And it's important to note that we have, uh, since 2011, uh, uh, every referendum we have archived. The 2015 Marriage Equality Web Archive Collection now links really nicely with the work of Della, Joanna and Kieran on the Born Digital Pilots and the Yes Equality Photographic Collection. And while this period marked significant growth in the web archive, it was still limited in terms of resourcing. However, this was to change in 2016 when funding was allocated to the Remembering 1916 Recording 2016 project. And for the first time in five years, a full-time resource worked on the web archive. This allowed for the archiving of over 450 websites that year, covering the 2016 commemorations of the 1916 Rising and the Irish involvement in the First World War. We also archived a significant number of websites covering the 2016 general election and other aspects of Irish life online that year. The appointment of a full-time resource also allowed us to undertake significant outreach and promotional work for the first time. It allowed us to engage with our stakeholders and develop an extensive collection of Irish websites. It also helped us spread the message about the web archive and why the NLI was undertaking this important work. So here is just a selection of the websites that we included that year, including the Ortiz 1916 website, uh, an exhibition by Rita Duffy uh, entitled The Souvenir Shop. Westport Historical Society's 1916 website and the website of the Irish Psalm Association. 
Following the success of the 2016 project, a permanent web archivist was appointed to the web archive. And in 2018, we tendered and began working with the Internet Archive, which is a not-for-profit American company dedicated to preserving the web. During this period, we refined our workflows and our collections, adopting a new approach to web archiving. And if you were here with us last year, you would have heard me talk about our workflows and the processes we engage with. Here is a quite simplified workflow for web archiving. Web archiving is an ever-evolving concept, and we are always adapting to changing technologies and developments. This period has seen great growth in the collections that we have developed. Collections from this period can be explored from our online portal, and they include our Eighth Amendment collection, Brexit, the General Election 2020, which is our third General Election collection. So if you so wish, you can compare from the 2011 to 2016 to 2020. And of course, COVID-19. Our ongoing collection charting this very difficult period in Irish life. We have broadened our collections, focusing on collecting multiple perspectives on contemporary Irish life online. And these include agriculture, LGBTQI+, rural life, young people, and our diaspora. We have dozens of collections covering everything from music to climate change, all available to explore and use from the comfort of your own home. And over the past few years, we have placed significant emphasis on working with subject specialists and project partners. And these include government departments and public sector bodies. And as you may know, in recent years, government departments have been moving from a standalone website, so for example, agriculture.gov.ie, to one central domain, so gov.ie forward slash agriculture. We have been working with them to archive the websites before the individual websites are removed from the live web. And by archiving government and public sector websites, we are not only preserving the online publication, but it also contributes to business continuity and ease of use for those who work in these uh, departments and public sector bodies. We also work with a number of subject specialists, including the 100 Archive, a platform which charts the past, present and future of Irish design. Each year, the 100 Archive selects a number of websites to be preserved in the NLI Web Archive. And this year, we've also launched our collaborations with the Irish Traditional Music Archive, which you can see here. The team at ITMA selected a number of Irish traditional music websites that they felt should be preserved, including that of the Cobblestone Pub. And we also have a collaboration with the Irish Community Archive Network. Working with these partners are key to developing our collections, uh, harnessing the expertise of others, and ensuring the preservation of these websites for future generations of researchers. So what's next from the National Library of Ireland's Web Archive? What will we be telling you at World Digital Preservation Day 2031? Hopefully more collaboration. We believe that collaboration is key to providing uh, rich and inclusive collections for future generations. We want the collections to be reflective of Irish life online. We look forward to working with new project partners, subject specialists and diverse communities. We also want to be in a position to work with researchers in new and exciting ways. And we have been lucky to work with Dr. Derek Green of UCD in the past. And we would love to explore what researchers can do with our extensive data sets. And finally, we would love to be in a position to archive the top level domain of the Irish web. We are restricted by the lack of legislation in Ireland pertaining to web archiving. Ireland has illegal deposit. However, it does not extend to web archiving, unlike the, ma the vast majority of national libraries across Europe that carry out domain level web archiving. The NLI continues to work with our board, the relevant government departments, um, to bring about a change in this situation. So hopefully that's something that will happen for us uh, in the near future. As I'm sure you can tell, we are very proud of the Web Archive and I feel very lucky to work on such an exciting and evolving programme of collection. Please explore the Web Archive from the National Library of Ireland's website and if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat or get in touch. 
Thank you all for listening and I'm going to hand you back to Kieran. <laughs>